According to a 19th century claim, David Rice Atchison was the acting president of the United States for a 24-hour period, commencing at noon on March 4th and lasting until noon on the next day. This was a small window of time between 11th President James K. Polk leaving office and when President-elect Zachary Taylor took the oath of office. The discrepancy comes from the fact that in 1849, Inauguration Day, March 4th, fell on a Sunday. Usually the president takes the oath of office on Inauguration Day, but because it was a Sunday, Taylor actually took the oath on March 5th. This left a 24-hour period between the end of Polk's term and Taylor taking the oath. As per the Constitution, in case of any situation in which the president was unable to serve, the vice president will hold presidential power. However, like Polk, his vice president, George M. Dallas, had already left office, and the vice president-elect, Millard Fillmore, wasn't yet sworn in. In theory, the presidency would then go to the next in the presidential succession line. At the time, this was the president pro tempore of the Senate, Democrat David Rice Atchison. If this were true, Atchison would be the earliest and one of only four people to ever serve as acting president of the United States. This wouldn't mean that Atchison was the president between James K. Polk and Zachary Taylor, as the acting president is a very distinct position from the actual president. The idea of acting president wasn't exactly clear at the time, nor would it become clear for another century, but it would likely mean that Atchison was temporarily holding presidential power until Taylor was able to serve. This was an idea purported by friends of Atchison, but it's been dismissed by the vast majority of historians. The main reason for dismissal is that while the president must take the oath of office to perform certain duties, they do in fact become president on Inauguration Day regardless of taking the oath. Therefore, Taylor was president as soon as Polk left office. If one does believe that a man only becomes president after taking the oath, then Atchison was no more the president than Taylor as he hadn't taken the oath of office either. Furthermore, Atchison wasn't technically president pro tempore of the Senate at the time. His term had technically ended on March 4th along with Polk's presidential term. He would be quickly re-elected to the same position the following day, which once again essentially puts him in the same position as Zachary Taylor. Despite the claims of his friends, when reflecting on the incident decades later, Atchison didn't think about it too seriously. He said he was woken up by a colleague, Willie Mangum, at three in the morning and informed jokingly that he was now president. Mangum also asked if he could be appointed to Secretary of State. Atchison further joked that he was proud that under his brief presidency, no one was fired. I made no pretense to the office, Atchison said. Speaking on the debate over the matter, he said, quote, a great many such questions are liable to arise under our form of government. Despite the position of most historians, the marker on Atchison's grave reads, quote, President of the United States for one day. Considering Atchison not to have served as acting president, only three people have done so. Vice Presidents George H.W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and Kamala Harris. All of these were in cases in which the president was undergoing surgery. Even at the longest, these periods were for less than 12 hours, and in the case of Kamala Harris, for only an hour and 25 minutes. Had Atchison truly been acting president, he would have been the only non-vice president to hold the position. In these cases, the individual is not actually president, as made clear by the 25th Amendment passed in 1967, the president has the ability to voluntarily transfer their power to the vice president for a limited period of time. Though the idea might seem bizarre, there was originally a possibility that when the vice president took the office, even upon the death of a president, they would only be acting president. This meant that the vice president wouldn't obtain the office themselves, as they would only hold it for a temporary period of time until a special presidential election could be held. For more information on this particular topic, 
Watch the video, How John Tyler Single-Handedly Defined the Vice Presidency. To support regular uploads on topics like these, consider subscribing and donating to Resyndicated on Patreon. Patreon link in the description below.